thanks so much for coming today uh, to our talk. I know there's a lot of good talks to, that are competing with us, some of them just across the hall, that are also related to Kubernetes. Um, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a native Kubernetes operator uh, tailored for Cloud Foundry. So let's, uh, let's get started. Um, I'm Troy Topnik. I'm from SUSE. I'm the product manager of SUSE Cloud Application Platform. And this is? Yeah. I'm Enrique Encalada, software developer at IBM Germany, and also part of the CF containerization team. And uh, we'd say a few things about how this all got started. Um, a little bit of a, uh, this is what we're going to talk about today, how we got to where we are uh, with this team and this project, uh, a little bit about the CF containerization team, who they are, who contributes to this project. Um, CF and Cube, how they work together right now in existing distributions and how we want them to work uh, in the future and uh, how we want that to be in a really good state upstream. Uh, and then Enrique is going to take over and talk uh, in great depth about the CF operator, how it actually works. Uh, and then some of the good things we found about this approach and some of the difficulties we've, we've hit. So. Um, I've been working in this space for a long time, with, even with some of the people in this room, uh, who got started trying to containerize uh, Cloud Foundry a number of years ago, back in 2015. Uh, we always thought this would be a good idea, and it was always a question of what technology underneath was, was ready to receive a complex workload like Cloud Foundry. So I was with a team uh, at HPE that developed a tool called Fissile, and the original mandate of that was to create container images out of uh, uh, Bosch stem cells and, and create uh, container images for all of the roles in Cloud Foundry and run them on some container scheduler or any container scheduler. And that, uh, that project uh, resulted in a distribution that ran on a, an abstraction layer that was on top of Kubernetes. The original intent was to develop something that would run on Apache Mesos, on Docker Swarm, on any container scheduler. We only ever got as far as Kubernetes. And then when some of that team moved to SUSE, uh, the open, open source company, the mandate is to always use the, the open APIs wherever they're available. Kubernetes by this time was the clear leader in uh, container scheduling. So we went with the Kubernetes API. And of course, all the work was open source from then. And SCF is the repo where a lot of this action has been happening until now. That's where we met with IBM, and they started taking a look at that. That's uh, short for SUSE Cloud Foundry, but it's not a, uh, a term that we use that often, just SCF usually. And SCF is uh, a repo that contains um, the results of things that go through Fissile and Configin, which writes, so Configin, or Fissile creates the Docker images. Uh, Configin creates the config for cube, and SCF is the repository that, that keeps all that stuff, uh, that ties all that stuff together. What does SCF stand for? Cloud Foundry. And uh, there are a couple of uh, production releases that are using this now. Uh, as we started to develop it, we noticed that I IBM was working with us on this as well, and now we have Cloud Application Platform, which is my product, <laughs> Uh, uh, Cloud Foundry uh, Enterprise Environment, environment not uh, addition, uh, Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment f uh, from IBM. Uh, one is a hosted Cloud Foundry environment, and ours is a software distribution. Um, and uh, they basically do the same thing, uh, except one is managed for you. They deploy containers via Helm charts, which is templatized cube, uh, uh, cube YAML. Uh, to Kubernetes, and they run uh, the containers for the applications and the control plane of Cloud Foundry itself uh, in Kubernetes. So with the current releases, this is done with the Diego scheduler. Uh, with future releases or current releases in Tech Preview, this is done with Irene. So this is not only the application workloads running on, uh, on Kubernetes, which is Irene, but also the control plane. So this is where we are right now. Um, and this all started, the, the, the upstream project um, that we're talking about today is uh, resulted from the desire from a few of the Cloud Foundry partners 
to make this an official upstream uh, project. So the work had gone on internally at SUSE and previously at, at HPE along this approach, and it was, it, it was a little bit siloed. And when we had discussions uh, at CF Summit in Basel two years ago uh, with uh, S people from uh, SAP and IBM, we decided, no, let's do this right, and let's do this in a way where uh, people in the wider Cloud Foundry community can get involved and take interest, and all of the partners can see what we're doing and, uh, and have input onto the design. So uh, a gentleman in here named Berndt, who uh, did the, the tough work of uh, drafting the, the first incubation proposal with the help from a few of us, uh, put this together, and we put together a proposal that was going to start a brand new project, start over from scratch, uh, we're going to uh, do it right now and we're going to, you know, have a fantastic uh, Kubernetes containerized uh, distribution and we're going to tie this in with Bosch in a beautiful way. We noticed at SUSE that the direction this was going was matching our roadmap of things that we had to fix to, to satisfy customer needs. So the design that we were, being, we were creating in this incubation proposal was uh, very much what our end state was. So we shifted our own rap roadmap, we revised the incubation proposal, uh, we sent it, it was accepted to the Bosch PMC, uh, and uh, that's where this project lives right now. Um, I was not at the team meeting in Nuremberg, did you want to yeah. make yeah, so the, meeting? the team meeting in Nuremberg in Germany took place last year, and basically was uh, a meeting with the developers from SUSE and IBM, where we basically defined the next evolution of the project. And that's basically how we'll be uh, doing this transition to the CF operator, which is basically uh, the talk that we're doing today about the implementation of the CF operator. Cool. Um, the, uh, as I mentioned, it's a Bosch uh, incubation project. Uh, it's SUSE and IBM developers uh, right now. Uh, I've had uh, good information that others are going to join, uh, and I'm very, very happy about that. Um, it is a very uh, remotely distributed team uh, in a lot of different time zones, and that's one of the reasons uh, it has a looser pairing model. So it's not like some, uh, most of the other uh, Bosch projects or, or the, a lot of the other CF projects. Uh, we have a contribution model that allows for individual contributions. Um, so we have uh, a slightly more flexibility there. Uh, we've got people all over the world, and I have to remember all these flags now. <laughs> Can you help me? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, Romania, Germany, China, Canada, uh, India, um, United UK, Kingdom, and yeah. Holland. Yes, and uh, and uh, all good Go users. <laughs> so, what we want to deliver for people is the Cloud Foundry promise on Kubernetes. Uh, this is a community that I've been talking to more and more in my role as a product manager. Um, who think they know all of the lessons that Cloud Foundry has painfully learned over the course of the last several years. Um, this is the message, this is what we want to deliver to our users. Here's my source code, run it for me in the cloud. I do not care how. Um, Kubernetes doesn't really have this yet. Um, it's aimed at operators. And uh, the mindset for deploying things is actually you've already done the packaging. You've already done the build. You've already created your artifact and you m probably have some knowledge about exactly how you want to run it. I think I have a corresponding haiku for this, which is here are containers, run them exactly like this because I care how. And that's a sort of an operator's perspective on this. And uh, we need to find a way for these, these two groups of people to be satisfied with uh, the new technology that we have uh, with this fantastic scheduler that's come onto the marketplace, but we want to ex uh, expose it uh, to users. So what we have are our two distributions, uh, and this is how it is right now. Uh, we put them through uh, our own separate build processes. Uh, we take the Bosch releases from upstream. Uh, we create uh, container images for each of those components, uh, and we create uh, using Configin, uh, uh, YAML config for it, which is templated into uh, Helm charts. And then we fire it off to Kubernetes, where it, uh, Kubernetes then basically takes over the, the task of managing the, the control plane workload for Cloud Foundry and, and the applications. Um, I call this fire and forget. It's, there's a little bit more to it than that. We have some special pods that do a little bit of extra management. 
but uh, we have this thing where we're, we're actually using Helm, we're leading on Helm, the sort of package manager for Kubernetes, quite a lot in a way that um, maybe it wasn't meant to do. Maybe it goes a little bit beyond what, what Helm was meant to do. And so when we look at, at uh, what's in Bosch, we see some things that can happen uh, during operational time uh, that we would like to adopt into the containerized uh, version. So. All right. So um, this transition to the CF opera operator is basically intended to uh, to leverage uh, all of these lessons learned that we already saw with the current uh, offerings in CAP and CIFI. Um, one of the two main keys uh, that we want to achieve with the CF operator is basically we want to have this uh, full Bosch compatibility. So if you take a look at the technology now, uh, everything is run during build time. Uh, if you would like to modify in the way you modify a moni uh, Bosch manifest during runtime, it's a little bit more complicated. So when we say that we would like to have this uh, full Bosch compatibility, is basically allowing the operators of the Kube cluster uh, to modify on the fly and persist those changes uh, during runtime. Uh, also, um, if you take a look on the flow of the current offerings, uh, what we do is we build, deploy, and if you would like to apply some sort of changes, then you call Helm, and then you build and deploy again. So we want to add this third step on the flow, that is the life cycle management of the deployment, and the way to achieve that is uh, through the CF operator. So the point here is that uh, the CF operator is a concept on Kubernetes, where basically we could add the, the logic that we want to define in the cluster uh, based on the requirements that we have. In this case, is the, the requirements is to be more Bosch compatible, and this is why we're uh, building or developing the CF operator. Um, before we jump into the CF operator implementation, I think it's important to, uh, to lay out some of the basic concepts of Kube. Uh, in a nutshell, Kube has this uh, concept of API server that is going to be writing the desired state of resources into a uh, storage. In this case, the storage is etcd. So you could see the resource or the object as, uh, for example, in Kube you have a stateful sets and deployments, and that is kind of a def definition of a resource. Then you have the controllers, and the controllers are uh, these components that run asynchronously in the, cl in the cluster, and they are going to try to match the storage uh, desired state of a object or resource into the cluster. So for example, if you have a stateful set uh, where you define that you want two pods or uh, two replicas of the object, uh, and you modify that stateful set object, then the operator is going to try to reconcile the desired state. So if you move from two to one replicas, then in the cluster you will finish from uh, two to one pods. And I can just show a small demo about this uh, so that you could keep in mind the, the, the idea of the uh, controller and the resources. So here we have a, a namespace CF with a specific set of pods that are Doppler. So if I would like to modify uh, the stateful set definition of those pods, I could just go to the replicas and I will um, modify from four uh, to two pods. And what I'm trying to showcase here is how the, uh, the stateful, cell, a stateful set uh, operator is going to reconcile the desired state that I want to have at this point in my cluster. And you will see in the upper terminal, terminal that he's going to delete or he's going to move from four to two pods. And this, kind of, this is kind of the idea of the, the controllers, uh, the oper operators, and the, custom, and the resources in the cluster. Yeah, so go going back to the presentation, um, uh, the controllers itself is um, the brain behind the resources, right? So the controllers fo follow this pattern of, um, I will read an object, I will do some things, and then I will update that object. So the nice thing about the controllers is that they are declarative. That means that you as an end user or as an operator of the cluster, uh, you could define how you want that resource to look. And for example, you can apply a cube control, uh, apply amount of F, where in a file you define the, the whole object. And every time that object changes, uh, the, the, the controller is going to reconcile the desired state. Um, resources is kind of the secret sauce of the CF operator because through resources we're going to define the logic we want to have in our cluster. Um, by default, Kube uh, is uh, shipped with a uh, standard uh, resources like a stateful sets deployments uh, and jobs, but for the CF operator we are going to use a customization of those resources uh, to leverage functionalities or uh, to achieve requirements we want to have. For example, uh, once we have a Bosch manifest, uh, we would like to convert 
uh, part of that manifest a specific blocks like the instance groups into a set of a specific custom resource definitions. And I will explain that um, in the next slides. So at this point, automation is key. And as uh, Troy mentioned, uh, with this CF operator, we're actually getting rid of um, uh, the need of using Helm and triggering Helm every time you want to do an update. Uh, the, the advantage of this is that the CF operator is going to trigger those updates for us automatically. And this is why automation is, is key. And this is one of the main features uh, there that we're bringing up to the table with the CF operator. So this is the CF operator logo. And this is like the main picture that illustrates the whole flow of the operator. As we mentioned, the idea of the CF operator is that it is full Bosch compatible. So we want to provide to the operator users uh, the same um, the same way of defining how you want your Cloud Foundry to look in your cluster. So the flow is uh, you could define a deployment manifest, as you know. Uh, you can even define ops files that are going to apply on top of that uh, Bosch deployment. And then at the end, you will get your desired uh, manifest. Then the operator is going to, to read that uh, object, which is uh, the Bosch manifest. And he's going to do a conversion from uh, pieces of, of that object into uh, and a specific set of uh, custom resource definitions that we have. So we have an uh, extended stateful set. This is, uh, this is basically very similar to the uh, cube uh, native stateful set with, a sp uh, with a specific differences. The extended job is the same case, really similar to the job, but with a specific, a specific difference. Uh, the same case with the extended secret. I will explain now in detail uh, what is each of, the, of them. And at the end, the, 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 the conversion or the, or, or the evolution of this um, manifest to cube resources is going to end by uh, having your uh, whole cloud, uh, cloud foundry components uh, running on, on containers or pods in your uh, cube uh, namespace, for example. So it's important to understand uh, the three main uh, custom resource definitions that we're using for the CF operator. Uh, the extended stateful set is basically uh, a stateful set in cube, uh, with the difference that the stateful set is going to react uh, to changes that are applying to config maps or secrets. So the idea is that uh, when you define an instance group uh, with uh, two instances in your manifest, that will f uh, generate a stateful set with two pods, right? And those pods are going to have uh, mounted uh, secrets and config maps. Uh, you can imagine that you will end with a secret if you define in the same uh, instance group some properties that make reference to variables in the Bosch manifest, right? So whenever someone modify one of these secrets, the extended stateful set uh, will react to those changes and it will generate uh, a new version of the extended stateful set. So this is just one feature. We have different features. Um, extended stateful set support versioning, so this will allow uh, Cloud Foundry components to be um, versioned, and this actually end up on having the possibility to do uh, canary upgrades or blue-green uh, upgrades, which is something that is not so easy to do with Kubernetes. In the future, we will have AC support, um, and yeah, the main thing is that the extended stateful set will always react to changes. Uh, the second custom resource uh, definition that we manage is the extended job. And as I say, it's the same as, uh, well, pretty similar as the uh, native uh, job in Kubernetes. The difference is that this job is going to persist the output. So for example, we will trigger this type of jobs whenever we want to render templates of a, a job release in our instance group. Um, so we will render the templates, or we're going to gather the data, render the templates, process the BPM files. And at the end, the final end file or JSON is going to be put it into the standard output, and that will be available for the pod that is running that instance group. So that the pod that runs that instance group can have uh, access to those rendered configuration files. Like for example, when you go to bar pickup jobs, is kind of the files I'm talking about. Uh, these extended jobs also uh, behave as errand jobs, the same concept in Bosch, uh, or uh, automatic errand jobs. And the last thing is extended secret. This is also a really nice um, a customized resource definition where basically uh, this uh, CRD is going to allow us to generate passwords, certificates, SSH keys, depending on what type of um, secrets you define in your Bosch manifest. Um, this uh, diagram just illustrates what happens in terms of the CF operator logic when you define a manifest and op files. Uh, in a nutshell, the, the, the operator is going to apply the op file in, on top of the manifest that is going to be stored on a secret. 
and at the same time, the operator is going to get all the variables and store them in the extended secrets um, resource that we define. Uh, then he will take that as a previous secret where he stored the render manifest and apply on top of that all the uh, variables that this extended secrets have so that at the end you finish with the desired manifest. This is just to illustrate the flow of the, uh, the, 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 the first job that the operator will do uh, with the Bosch manifest that, that you as an operator uh, provide. Um, this is just to illustrate the complexity of uh, rendering Bosch templates. Of course, this is something that Bosch is already doing for free for us, but for the CF operator, we need to make this implementation. So it's just to illustrate the, the complexity. It's not easy uh, working with, PM, with BPM files and processing spec files is a, a little bit tricky, especially uh, because of the need of Ruby when we're building a, a binary that is mainly implemented in Golang or purely Golang. And this last uh, slide is just for you to really grasp uh, the idea of the conversion from a Bosch manifest into a cube resource. So the idea here is to uh, put into squares the blocks uh, of a Bosch manifest uh, so that you can understand into what type of cube resources they are going to, uh, to be um, mutated, right? So for example, the releases block is just going to be uh, for processing information of what type of Docker image my pod needs uh, to pull. Uh, the instance groups are going to convert to extended stateful sets. Um, the properties is going to be, the properties inside the jobs is going to, com is going to be used just for processing information so that you can know what, uh, how to render your spec files of the release. And all the, the block of variables that is intended to be for uh, generated uh, an ad hoc extended, extended secret. So I will show now a demo, uh, which is basically an end-to-end -end demo, where I would like to, uh, to showcase all of these um, uh, concepts and implementations that I just mentioned. So the first thing to notice is that my um, CF operator in the left screen is already running. The second thing is I, I would like to show um, what, a, what type of files I will apply into my cluster so I could define the state of the object that I want my CF operator to, to reconcile uh, anytime I do changes, right? So you can see that this is the, the goal that we're achieving uh, or the goal that we're aiming for, that is you as an operator, uh, you will provide this uh, config management file in the same way you do with Bosch, which is basically a Bosch manifest. So you will see here that we have the, the same blocks we use in a Bosch manifest, releases, instance groups. We have a, a NATS instance group with a, a, an amount of one instances. And under there, we have a single job that is NATS with a NATS release. And you, you could pay attention to the properties where we reference uh, the password for NATS uh, into one of the variables, right? The second thing is um, because we are full Bosch compatible, uh, we could actually apply an op files on top of that uh, Bosch manifest, where we will say that I don't want just a NATS instance, but I actually want two. And the last thing is we're going to tell to the operator that we have somewhere in our cluster these uh, configuration maps, and he will process uh, those ones to generate the desired manifest. And this part is basically the, the diagram that, I, that I, ex, I explained before about how to render uh, that, that uh, desired manifest. So the first thing to do here is um, I'm going to watch for um, resources that I have in my uh, CF Summit namespace. At the moment I have nothing because I haven't um, applied any of the changes. Uh, the second thing is um, I will apply this um, deployment manifest that I show here, which is the one that I basically, let's call it the, the Bosch manifest because it's a Bosch manifest. And I will apply that in my, in my uh, CF summit and namespace. And I will take cube that I want him to generate from that Bosch manifest uh, config map, right? The second thing is I will apply the same. I want to generate a config map, but this time I want him to generate the config map based on the ops file which is the one I have here, where I would like to have uh, two instances of NATS instead of one, right? So I trigger that guy, and uh, the last thing I want to do is to apply the QBosh um, deployment, which is um, this command here. And what will happen now is that 
the operator will uh, get the desired state of the cluster I want to have, and he will render that manifest and he will realize that he needs to generate now uh, two pods of nuts because I'm telling him that I don't want one, I want two. And also he will trigger a set of jobs uh, to process information that is needed uh, to be able to have those nuts pods. Uh, for example, you will see here that I will uh, have for a, a, a specific period of time a job that is going to be run to gather all the uh, template information and also a job to generate the secrets because we define um, a reference to a variable for the NATS password. So now I, I run that and you can see here we got uh, variable interpolation. We have uh, a job to, to, to gather the, the data of the manifest and now we have uh, a pod that is not, that is uh, initializing. And if you recall, we apply the ops files to have uh, two instances rather than one, so we finish here with those two instances. So now you can imagine that you, in theory, have the whole Bosch manifest of uh, a couple of hundred lines where you define all the CF components, and the flow will be basically the same. The operator is going to generate that um, a desire of a state of the Cloud Foundry um, deployment into the cluster, and every time you do an, a modification in, in one of the config maps, for example, the operator is going to try to reconcile that change and apply that in your cluster. Uh, you, could see, you could see here, for example, that I could go um, into that NAT spot, right? And if you're familiar with uh, Bosch and Cloud Foundry, uh, you will see that here I will have uh, a very similar setup uh, that we're used to have uh, for all the um, components that we run. So we have this uh, same type of directory path where I could uh, cut a config file uh, for NATS and you will see um, the same renderer template that NATS uh, component needs to use for running. All right, so that was the end-to-end uh, -end demo and I will move back to the presentation. So uh, we found some problems as we work our way through this. Um, we uh, are having trouble dealing with availability zones right now. Um, we need more feedback and more people using it. Now, the stuff that we've just shown is very, very new. So this uh, is landed in a working state, I believe, last week, uh, just in time for the show. Um, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we could also, uh, we need to think about integrating with technologies like Istio. Uh, we have this nice setup of versioning of a stateful sets that allow us to do uh, different upgrades, but we know, we know also that in the market we have Istio that could even leverage uh, more the, the setup. Yeah, so highlights. Highlights is uh, there is a lot of things we could do actually with the CF operator. We could use this uh, concept of uh, mutated webhooks in Kubernetes uh, to leverage Irene, for example. Uh, in a nutshell, we could uh, add some sort of add-ons where we could uh, label some of the Irene application pods uh, to be uh, accessible via SSH. So basically with the, the webhooks, you could uh, and know if an application wants to be accessible via SSH and then you can uh, put a sidecar on the same pod, something like that. Um, also, one, one thing is that uh, through side we were able to, to have a, a good uh, set of lessons learned that now we're applying now with the CF operator just to uh, leverage the implementation. Uh, it would be nice also to, to migrate some of the, the features we're implementing now also to the Kubernetes community and one thing is that the, the speed of the project have been uh, pretty good. Uh, we're working together since less than one year and I think we have achieved a, a really bi a very good uh, milestone so far. And this is uh, how to find us. That's where we are on uh, the Cloud Foundry Slack. Uh, you can talk to any of us there. We didn't really leave enough time for, for a lot of questions. We'll try and get a couple in. Um, but you can see Bernd's original proposal, our proposal, uh, and uh, this is how you can get involved with our project. So, thanks very much. Thanks. I have a question. Do you look at the CPI route at all? Or does it totally not we did look at this. Uh, the question is, did we look at the CPI route? And uh, Sandy Cash and I did a presentation in Basel about, uh, and he did one even the previous Basel, 
about why that really didn't do everything we needed to do. And this approach uh, is sort of meeting halfway. So the, um, uh, the, the IBM team that had explored that and had then come around to using Fissile and then seen, uh, seen it from that perspective uh, thought uh, along with us that this, this was a good, uh, a good way. And it seems also that uh, the whole Kubernetes community is, is moving to operators for really complex workloads. So this seemed to be the best way. Implement the things we needed in Bosch directly in an operator. Yes, Dan. Bosch uh, creates a plan uh, when it knows about the dependencies between jobs. Is there anything in the scope of the operator at the moment, say if you were to rotate TLS certs, to know that oh, I'm going to need to change this, then that, then the other, in order, rather than the kind of more fused approach, oh, I'll just keep on restarting things until it all works? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so far, uh, the way we deploy the components, for example, the router, is through a stateful set. So that is already a Kubernetes concept when you want to roll an upgrade. It's going to be uh, upgrading one by one, for example. But there is a dependency between, like, so if I want to rotate my TI certs. Yeah, for, uh, I think we use webhooks for things like that, also for volumes. So when you want to do an upgrade, uh, webhooks uh, will allow us to uh, make sure that the volume is passed to the next uh, uh, component or pod. So I assume it's uh, kind of the same way for a rotation of secrets or something like that. The advantage is that we keep all the secrets in uh, secrets in Cube, and that could be accessible by different bots at the same time. Uh, more questions? Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, the question was uh, how did, uh, sort of we, we also need Irene in here to run the applications. We don't actually need that right now. Uh, we can use either Irene or Diego. Like the IBM and, and Sousa distros figured out how to run Diego in a pod. Uh, so Diego cells can run that way. But yes, the, the goal is to, to actually pull in an Irene Bosch release, include it with the rest, and then uh, application scheduling is happening right alongside uh, the control plane running in Cube. Yeah, I think one of the things due to the maturity of Irene, uh, we could offer the option now for uh, users to uh, do the staging either with Diego or um, just straight with Irene. And that would be configured in the Bosch manifest? Yes. I think, I think we're at our, our time. Thanks so much for coming today. <laughs>